he doesn't take it back because he takes he can't have have it back because it's his already. Does he the gave it, he gave it to you even as that, a loan. As even a loan. even logically that doesn't make sense. Because an inheritor is not the one who dies. Right, if you're saying that they are all the same word, do you assert that the hand is the shin? Do you assert that the face and the hands are the same thing? Then therefore they are not the same word. And no. that's another contradiction. So for instance, what what when you say Alice hands, what are they? They aren't anything. They aren't anything. There you go. So so just like Muslims accuse Christians of having different Bibles, Muslims have different hadiths. Is that a shared hadith is what I'm asking? No, no. Right. So it's particular to Shia Islam? No, some, some of the, Ash, uh, the, the Asharites and the um, Maturidis, which are the majority of Sunnis, by yes. the way, they, 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 they have a similar theology to you. Yeah. Yeah. So are you listening, Jake? Lots of Muslims have different theologies. Right. So, as I was saying, what you what you what you actually said, what you actually said, was that Allah inherits like he gives you the money, it's his money, and then he takes it back. That is a human activity. You've just described the attribute of Allah in a way that we can think or imagine, and Allah says that his attributes are not like anything we can think or imagine. So you literally reply, contradicted your Quran. Give me time. Give me, give me. When I say God is not the same as human, yeah. I mean that God doesn't die. When he gives you something, he doesn't take it back because he takes it, he can't have, have it back because it's his already. Does he, the gave it, he gave it to you even as that, a loan. As even, a loan. Lo even logically that doesn't make sense. Why? Because an inheritor is not the one who dies. You see, logic. Yeah, that's why, that's uh, why I'm telling you, God is not the same. Is Allah in No, the, the point is, you see, you're not even thinking about your own argument, bro. Because you're not even. You're try, you're listen, compare... you've literally said Allah is not the one who dies. An inheritor is not the one who dies. An inheritor is the one who survives the one who dies. So, quite literally, Allah survives our deaths, so it's right to describe him as an inheritor. Okay. Let me. Uh, the verse says. We will inherit the earth. Who is the earth? Who owns the earth? That's the contradiction. No, wait, wait. Answer my question. Allah owns the earth. Question, Allah right? owns the earth. So, when everybody dies. Yes. Because all, all of us are going to die, right? One day. Yes. The earth will become to who? Does Allah own it? Yes. Do we, pos is, uh, do we have ownership of the earth? Temporarily, yeah. Okay, so are you Temporary. saying are you saying Allah doesn't own the earth right now? He does. So he do we us, own the earth right now? We can own. We have we have, have a certain title called. For so like we have shared. Of so basically, can human can beings. So it's human. No, no, no. I'm just going to reply to this one. Human beings and Allah have shared ownership. That's what you've just said. What? No, no, it's Sorry? not. No, there's a certain term which is Arabic for Khalifa. Khalifa is essentially. It's 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 a bit similar to the regency. No, it's not, 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 not entirely. It's a bit similar to the Christian principle of, of uh, stewardship. This idea that you basically put on this earth to... Or regency. You know, okay, whatever. I mean, back, back in RE, we learned stewardship. Or regency, call what you want. But, it's, but essentially, this principle is that you're on this earth and, and you basically have, have been put on, on earth to carry out the will of God. It doesn't mean that, that now there's shared ownership that, you know, when you look up the paper, it says God slash the humans. No, the, the ownership is, is, upon, is upon God. Yeah. We have been given this duty on earth yeah. to, to, to carry out God's will. That's perfect. Right, so let me, let me reply to this because the thing is, you're, you're, you're jumping around on hot coals because you're trying to reconcile a contradiction that can't be reconciled. If you're saying that Allah inherits, then what you're saying is he doesn't own. If he owns it, if he owns it, keep running, Shamsi, right? If he owns it, if he owns it, then that means he's not inheriting it. Now, if you're saying that Allah owns the earth right now, right? Then that means he doesn't inherit what he already owns. You can't inherit what you already own. See, the inheritance... What is inheritance? It's taking a, a transfer of wealth from a, a, a living person, oh, sorry, from a dead person to a living person. Great. Right? Right. Okay. Is this... So, we're gonna die, right? Yes. So. Whom Britain will be to whom when we when we die? When all human beings die, are dead, Allah is the only possessor. 
Right. So you are. So it's the same. But that's inheritance. Same. That's inheritance. Yeah. Exactly. But that so, contradicts the idea of ownership because you don't inherit what you already own. That's yeah. we are as human beings. Yes. You're so right let me. Right. But, as human beings, you are right. But now you've got another problem. No. Why? You've got another problem why? because your the logic of your argument forces you forces you into the position of affirming the idea of joint ownership whilst denying the idea of joint ownership. And that's another contradiction. Who owns the earth right now? Um, look, you're, you're taking this in a, like, a ridiculous spin. You're, you're looking at it. It's not ridiculous. Like, no, I'm going to tell you. I, I, I mean, I agree the Quran is ridiculous, but no, it's not my fault opinion. the Quran says that. That's, that's just what the Quran that's says. But, but the point being is that you're looking at inheritance as if it's some like, kind of juristic uh, jurisprudential, like a lawyer kind of look. It's not, the, the word inheritance here, it, it basically refers to the idea that, that no one will be on earth when, when God will take it back. Everyone will die. We have a verse which is basically... Uh, Do you uh, affirm no, that no, Allah no, is the no, inheritor? No, wait, 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 wait. Do you affirm that Allah is the inheritor? Yes, but... but, but what but no, what but is no, inheritance? But not in the not human in the, form. I mean, not in the human form. You but you described it in a human fine. way. No, but but, but you're trying to define inheritance. inheritance. But you shouldn't. I should. <laughs> no, it no. Which means that everything will perish yes. except God. Yes. So, so this, this idea of, of, uh, of inheritance is referring to once everyone is dead, the only, the only, the only living being is God. This right. is what it's referring to. It's not, so, so this kind of a, if everything disappears, so you see that's just another contradiction. If everything disappears, okay. what's being inherited? No, I'm talking about life as in, as a human life. Are you, are you saying that? Are you, are you, no, 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 but that, this yeah. is the point. And the inheritance is very clearly that a dead person surrenders possession to a living person. That is inheritance. Am I being unfair? No, no, that is the literal juristic, like, Thank you. law based. So now, now, that, now we've, now we've and, and, and Allah is described as the inheritor. Yes. But that contradicts the idea that Allah is the owner. Because you can't inherit what you already possess. But it gets worse. There's other contradictions but, in the Quran. See, no, but you know, when people think that they own and they die and leave everything, then it shows that uh, it's, it's, it's similar to inheritance in the sense that he takes back what he gave. So it's similar but not the same? Similar to the human uh, way of doing things, but it's not the same, of course, because Allah is always living. He doesn't die. Yeah. So no one's like, arguing that point, by the way. So I'm, I'm giving you something. something let's say I give you my phone, and then I take it back. Wait. Let's. See, can we use the analogy of your phone as an example? Okay. You give me your phone. Do okay. I, do I own your phone at that point? For a while. Right. Okay. If I own it, do you own it? In the time, the time when you own it. Yes. I'm the owner, but I gave you the, the ability to use it. I'll, I'll ask you the question again. If you give me your phone and I own it, do you still own it? I didn't give it to you to own it, I gave it to you to use it. So, so if you give me your phone to own it... To, not, not to own it, sorry, to use it. To use it. If you gave me your phone to use it, yes. you're still the owner, right? Yes. yes. So, if I die, yeah. can you inherit something that you own? I take it back. But right. can you inherit it? I know you repossess it. You see, what you're doing is, okay. What, okay. what you lack is a word. Okay. The word that you're looking for, the word that the Quran doesn't give you, and this is why there's a contradiction, is because what you're describing is repossession. Um, That's what you're describing. You're, 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 dis your you're describing repossession. You, you're not you describing worship, inheritance. You worship a man god. That's changing so, the subject. No, 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 no. It's not changing the subject because you have this notion that when we discuss theology, you can bring humans and combine it with God in some kind of crazy way. When we're, when we're referring to this idea of inheritance, as I told you, when everyone dies, okay, the, the, the soul um, being that can, can enable uh, to, to basically incur action upon earth is who? Is God, per definition. So that's what it's referring to when it says inherit. It doesn't mean that, that now you have this joint ownership and then you, you know, give the ownership back to God in that kind of sense. What, what were you, no one has understood it that way throughout the history of course. No, no, what I'm no saying is, not what I'm saying is, the, 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 the reality is that... The, you, I mean, you haven't even begun to address the argument. Yeah, because you don't even understand the argument. No, I understand it. You, you, so you have, it doesn't under. It, we have Arab atheists. No, but no, no, no the, 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 that, thing, the thing is, the thing is, guys, the thing is, because they if understand you're, Arab if you're right? saying, if you're saying, and I know there's Arab atheism. I know atheism is increasing in the Islamic world. We both know that, right? It's a fact. I don't know why you bother denying it. Like, no, no, it, it is. It is. Do you agree that atheism is growing in the Arab world? 
it's yeah. going in everywhere. Islam is rotting from the inside, guys. But Just also, deal with it. No, I mean, right? It's rotting okay, from the inside. Pure, pure, pure research, so, 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 so Islam is the greatest. It's the most growing religion. In absolutely, and so, I agree through birth exactly. rates. No, I mean, no, yes. No, no, no. The, go and compare. The Philippines, the Philippines go and compare. Have, go and compare. I'm not denying yeah. conversions. Yeah. Again, that's a fallacious yeah. argument. You're you're hearing God arguments bless. that aren't stated. God, bless. God, bless. God peace with your sister. You. God right. Bless. The the point is, bro. It, it, if you go and compare what Pew Research says about child size families and correlate that to religious growth, you see a correlation. I, I, I don't. I don't deny that childbirth has, has something to do with it. Yeah. But, but I believe Senegal I, and. I never. I never. I never, I never said. I never said that conversions aren't happening. There are convert like in the church that I was at today. There was a girl from Saudi Arabia and a girl from Iran. They're both Christians, you know. And and Christianity is growing exponentially in places like Indonesia and in places like Iran. It started to grow in Saudi Arabia. You know, yeah. I'm not denying atheism is growing faster. I'm, I totally agree with you. That's what all the evidence suggests. Yes, yes. And, and you love and you love to boast that. And and but and, and and Islam is rotting. From the inside, I, I literally just gave you a bunch of examples, but yeah, you were Saudi Arabia, I agree. And in Indonesia, and in Indonesia, and and in and in North Sudan, North Sudan was applying Sharia law up until last year. They've abandoned Sharia law. They've abandoned Sharia law. They fought 18 years. They fought. They fought the South. The South. Yeah. And Christianity is growing in Sudan. Yeah. So there's another example for you. Okay. Let's go back to the inheritance. Now, so, so, so my, my, my point is, my point is, you were the one that raised the Islam is the fastest growing religion thing. He was the one that raised about the atheists. So you invited me to make those points. Yeah, because, because you mentioned that Islam was rotting. Like, no, he said, we have atheists in the Arab world. So he brought up the question of atheism. That's why I mentioned it. You need to keep track of the conversation. I mean, I just joined recently. That's fine. But the point is, there are it, two assertions that mutually contradict can't both be true. If you're describing Allah as an inheritor, that excludes him as being the owner. If you're describing him as being the owner, it excludes him from being the inheritor. Now, if you're saying that Allah has ownership and we also have ownership, then that means that you're asserting joint ownership. Now, you can get out of the contradiction. You can get out of the contradiction by asserting that we have joint ownership with Allah, but that would be shirk. Uh, no, it's not. And shirk is basically when you give the, the attributes of Allah yeah. to someone other than Allah. Yeah. So if you're saying that we have joint ownership with Allah, that's shirk. No, no, no. That's, not, that's, not, that's not how shirk works. Shirk is basically when you give a soul uh, attribute. So for example, we are seeing. Like ownership? No, we, we are seeing, God is also seeing. So does that mean we're now committing shirk because we can see and God can see? So, I mean, that, that brings on to another problem with Islamic texts. No, it's not a problem at all. It's just, yeah, it does. It's just that when, when, the problem is that you're uh, critiquing this from a, like a Christian theological perspective. Because you want to, you know, rush... Because when we, yeah, I mean, we, we, no offence, but you don't even know what my criticism is about the vision of Allah. Because you've I mean, never I've heard seen, it. I've, I've seen some videos. So, so. I, I'm going to prove to you that you don't know. What is my criticism of the issue about Allah's visions that, and the fact that we have visions? visions? What, the, 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 like he can see. What, what, what is my criticism of that? Because you're um, claiming to know. Well, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, we, we, right, we're great. Exactly we're Which is exactly what I said. You don't know what my criticism okay, so is of that. Just, yeah. So here's what my criticism so, 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 so here's what my criticism of it is. It, it, it's simple. If you're saying that Allah can see, yeah. but Allah's vision is not like anything that you can think or imagine, so it's not like any kind of human vision, then the word vision there isn't a word, doesn't describe anything, it's simply a sound. And that means that the Quran has sounds but not words. Okay, that makes zero sense. That well, is, it does to is, anyone who thinks logically. No, no, that is philosoph philosophically, that is okay. just... Shall we, shall we work out the logic for you? No, no, I mean, I'm pretty good at philosophy. Great, you know, good. Actually, then you want, very, you, you want, you so, want to struggle that, to follow it. But that is, no, no, it's not about struggling, you're, not, you're just not making any sense. At Brilliant. All. What, 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 is vision, the def what is the definition, how, how do we distinguish between words and sounds? Well, words are, are defined, I mean, and sounds are not defined. No, what, what, give, give me, I mean, yes, I mean, in the broadest sense, that is correct. But be more basic. How do we make the distinguishment between words and sounds? Well, words are curators of a language, sounds are not language based. Language -based. Exactly. So one is communicating something and another one isn't. Agreed? Right. So when Alice says he has vision, 
and you say that that's not anything like you can think or imagine, then that noise has communicated nothing. Because anything that you can think or imagine that sound to mean, it is by definition not the thing you have thought or imagined. Which means that that word communicates nothing and therefore it is just a sound. No, I mean, that's in your really simplistic... Uh, so explain why it's wrong. Because, because when... Okay, so for something to actually make sense, it has to be like derived within a certain, within like a certain framework yes. of, of the of the like subject that you're trying to express. Yeah. So for example, one word is contrasted by another word. Fair enough. But, but like when we're discussing theology with, within the Islamic uh, framework, we're, we're discussing um, certain attributes that in reality are expressive of the human experience. So this, this idea, for example, that, that God sits on his throne, yeah. or that, you know, God's hand is above your hand, or God sees, yeah. or God speaks. Yep. All of this is just expressive of the human experience for us to understand the higher, the higher being. But what do you understand? But, but that's not, the point. It's not that God has eyes, or that God has but, but, a hand. But listen, but listen the, the, you've just proven my point. You've just said that these are human expressions so that we can understand. But, those human expressions, if I asked you, what is Allah's hand? What is Allah's shin? What is Allah's vision? You will reply that Allah is not like anything you can think or imagine. He's not like anything in his creation. Which means that nothing can be understood by these terms. They might as well all be the same term. Yeah, that's true. That's right? actually, that's true. That's, yeah. that's, that's perfectly true. Yeah. So, so this idea that he's all seeing, Thank you all knowing, for all demonstrating that, that is, my argument is logical. Yeah, I know, okay, that, that part makes sense. Great. Seeing, We've gone from no sense to Sense. Yeah, because in the beginning you were, you were talking about how there were just sounds in a sense. I mean, there was a confusion. The confusion yeah. was a bit weird. So you agree that all these words can be the same they are, word? They are synonymous. No, they are literally synonymous. Because the idea of all seeing, all hearing, all knowing, it means the same thing. I mean, there, there is no vision within God. There is no... Um, there, is, there isn't a brain where all knowledge just comes. It is just expressive of the human experience. Do you believe in divine simplicity? Um, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Right. So you assert the essence and you assert the attributes. Absolutely. Right, if you're saying that they are all the same word, do you assert that the hand is the shin? Do you assert that the face and the hands are the same thing? Then therefore they are not the same word. And no, that's another contradiction. That is, you're, you're, that just that is, you're just compounding contradiction on top of one another. You're asserting contradictory points. You've literally just told me two minutes ago, one, one minute ago, that these could be all the same word. Yes. And then in the next but breath, you've said that they are not but the same thing. But the skin and the face and the hand and, and all of these expressions, again, it is within the same paradigm that I just explained earlier, which that... That made no sense. Huh? That made no sense. We just agreed that it did, like, a minute ago. Go on. Anyways, um, so the notion of the sin, of, of the shin, sorry, of the hand, of the face, etc., is also like expressive of, for example, God's power. This idea that God's hand is above all hands, God's power is above all, all power. Yeah. When God sits on the throne, it's, it's representative of His control, etc., etc. Yeah. So, so, so that's the understanding of um, of these, you know, expressions with regards to. God's like yes. so-called physical heart. So you haven't, you haven't, um, just so you know, I didn't hear anything in what you've just said that reconciles the contradiction. Nothing in what you said reconciled the contradiction. But the other... What was the contradiction? The contradiction was, how can uh, the shin and the face and the hands, etc. be part of... Um, no, the contradiction was that the Quran says that these are the words of Allah, a word communicates sound. Sorry, a word communicates meaning, not sound. A word communicates meaning. These words don't mean anything to the extent that they could be the same word. Therefore, they're not words, they're just sounds. That was the contradiction. Synonyms mean the same thing, that doesn't mean they don't mean anything. But what, so for instance, what, what, when will you say Allah's hands, what are those? They aren't any, they aren't anything. There you go. God, God, God isn't a thing, by the way. Yes. Yeah. But, but that's... Because in the Quran it says literally, Laysa came with the which means nothing, no thing is alike him. I've been so I mean, and that's the problem. That's the problem with the con that's the point of the contradiction. No, because that's where the rubber hits the road of the contradiction. How is it a contradiction? God isn't a thing. I'll say it again, because you didn't listen. The contradiction is 
Allah says that the Quran are his words. Yes. A word is something that communicates meaning. Okay. There are words in the Quran that do not communicate any meaning such that, such that, yeah. Which words don't communicate any meaning? Hands, shin, face. How? I told you hands is a reference to control. Face is a reference to his identity. Um, sitting is a reference to him being in control. Great. Okay. So, so, so you're not a Salafi. You don't believe in the Salafi. I'm a Shia. Okay. Right. Great. I, I don't get many opportunities to speak to a Shia and I didn't realize I was. Can you show me where Muhammad says what you've just said? Yes, in, uh, in we, we have a hadith collection yeah. by, the, by the name of Kitab al-Tawheed, by Sheikh Sadduq. He, he, mentions, he mentions that these attributes, these uh, idea of the hand, the face, the expression of his hand. That, that Muhammad said that? Yes. Right, I'd like to see that, if you could pull that up. I mean, because that would just mean. It's an, I mean, I, I, I don't know if it's translated. So it's an yeah, outbreak. it would be good. It would be good to see that because that would mean that your version of Islam is more consistent and coherent than the Salafi version of Islam. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm not Salafi because I don't believe. In it. Yeah, 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 no, no. I'm, I'm saying if you've got a hadith that that, that pushes that onto Muhammad, that uh, from a textual point of view, yeah, I mean, look, it's, then the, then the question is, you know, like why do the the, the Salafi reject? Reject that hadith. Why? Well, because they have, they, they have a different uh, hadith portrait. Yes. So, so, so the sources where they get the narration from the prophet yep. is, is like a different, um, a different chain. Yes. So, so we have a different chain of them. Yeah. So, so just like Muslims accuse Christians of having different Bibles, Muslims have different hadiths. That's true. Yeah. And there's no agreement amongst Muslims about what hadiths to use. There are, there are hadith which are mujma alayh, which means every Muslim agrees. I agree. There are some that are shared. You all right, bro? Peace with you, bro. So, like, in the, in the, in, what, why would, what, basically yeah. this book called, Go on. Uh, Kitab al-Tawheed. Could you read it? I mean, it's, it's got a lot of narrations, but we can. If you can find it, I'd love to hear it. Because all that, that would, that would mean, that would mean that the, 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 the Shia Islam is excluded from this particular criticism, but it would lead to another criticism, which I would like to express. But I've never heard a Salafi be able to defend against this point, but I'm happy to accept that maybe a Shia can. So, now in terms of, in terms of why the Salafi and the Sunni reject that hadith, what is the basis of that rejection? Is that a shared hadith is what I'm asking? No, no. Right. So it's particular to Shia Islam? No, I mean some, some of the, Ash, uh, the, the Asharites and the um, Maturidis, which are the majority of Sunnis, by yes. the way, they, 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 they have a similar theology to you. Yeah. yeah. So, are you listening, Jake? Lots of Muslims have different theologies. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's not really like that because um, the Asharites and the Maturidis uh, uh, um, uh, are the majority of the Sunni ones. I know they are. I know they are. So, so it's just in this corner, the Salafi yeah, yeah, are I mean, very present. They're, they're very vocal, but, yeah. but, but their theology in this, uh, in this sense, in the idea of affirming the physical attributes of God, it's a minority within the Muslim world. Would you agree? Would you agree that my criticism, my criticism stands against the Salafi? Because they can't, they can't show Muhammad saying what you're going to show me. Muhammad said. And, be, and by the way, I'm being very, I'm being more charitable than any da'i because the da'i in this part would say, you, until you show me, I don't believe it. Whereas no, I'm acting, I I'm, I I'm saying that you're acting in good faith, I mean, no, and I'm willing to have, accept have, even though you haven't shown me yet. I mean, I have read, I mean, I can't show it because you don't have an Arabic. I mean, no, it's, I it's in Arabic. Right. Right. Because, right. because I, I mean, I, I, I have to translate it, and you have to trust me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the point is, I'm going to be charitable, yeah, because, I mean, and I'm going to take you at your word. Yeah, I mean, right? I, I, I don't know if he's alive. But my, my point is, this, this just moves my argument into, into a different phase as why, as a Christian, I reject Islam. Because the Shia and the Sunni, don't have any agreement about which hadiths to use to interpret the Quran, except in a small corpus. And when you look at the, the you look at the hadiths that they disagree about, Islam starts to look very different. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it really depends on which part of theology you're, you're talking about. Because if you're talking about uh, the part of theology... The successor that, of Muhammad. Successorship, for example, that's where a lot of things differ. And about some companions. A lot of religious practices in the Shia are very different from the Salafi, the Sunnis. No, I mean, the, the main ones are not different. Prayer is the same. Hajj is, uh, pilgrim is the same. Fasting is the same. So it's... it's, it's prayer, prayer. No, hold on. The Shia, the Shia pray uh, five rakats of prayer in three sessions. Uh, uh, no, they do. Are you saying? So you're saying? Are you saying that that Shia don't combine prayers? 
we do we, we combine we combine prayers, but um, but there are there, 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 apart from I think one school of Sunni fiqh, the other three schools reject that practice. Um, so there is actually a difference. I mean, in prayer. The, well, basically, the morning prayer is is by itself. Then, then they have two uh, midday prayers. We combine them. The Sunnis don't. Yeah. That's the, that's I mean. So, really so that is a difference. It's a minute difference. No, and when you pray, you lose a little stone, right? Well, it doesn't have to be a stone, it basically has to be something that's directly from the earth. Right. Yeah. But the Sunni don't do that. So, some of them don't. So your prayers are different as well. I mean, look, these, these are my new differences. And the well. But the thing is, you're telling me that you have managed to maintain, save and sustain a tradition that goes back to Muhammad, but you can't agree upon what that tradition says. No, I mean... Look, now, I'll be willing, I'll be willing to concede. I'll be willing to concede. I'll be willing to concede. The, the gen the 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 the, the, the meta narrative of Islamic prayer has been maintained. But I mean some Sunni may raise his hand about this. Yeah. We Shia we don't. We don't yes, we don't. exactly. I mean, these are really my new But the point is what it demonstrates is that the, the tradition of the Prophet has not been maintained in its purity. That's true. That's true. Are we agreed on that? Yeah. Right. Now I mean then that starts to beg lots of other questions. I mean it is preserved, but obviously as a Shia, I would say preserved within but it, our lineage. But, but it hasn't, su but it, it has hasn't, suffered corruption amongst the yeah. Sunni, is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like right, and and the, but the Sunni would then say it suffered corruption amongst the Shia. So both sides of this argument are saying that they haven't preserved the other side, haven't preserved the tradition of the Prophet purely. Right, and then that starts to beg lots of other questions. Right, so so this is so. It starts to beg the question about how much of the tradition, the Sunnah, you can actually trust. Yeah, uh, um, even with a, with a secular frame, uh, framework, they basically mention that those sections where you have overlapping, where it's essentially word for word is the same, the, the wording of a narration is the same, it's very, very difficult for Sunni scholarship and Shia scholarship yeah. to sit together and make this up. So yeah. they actually accept those as historical facts. Yeah. Or, or in a sense, historically, you know, accepted within the Muslim world. Yeah. So for example, the moon splitting isn't a historical fact to say within the secular world. Within the Islamic framework, that is a fact. Yeah. The moon did split. Yeah. So, so, I mean, all Sunnis and Shias agree on that. Yeah. So, 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 so then you can sit, sit and say, okay, that, that is definitely within the Islamic um, Framework. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm totally. I'm happy to agree that there is a lot of agreement on on, on it. Yeah. No, I've got no problem with that. I agree. Sunnis and Shia agree. But the the very, for instance, and this cuts right to the heart of Islam. The very reason why the party of Ali separated from, or rather, from your perspective, maintained the expectations of Muhammad versus the Sunni who usurped. The expectations of Muhammad. Did Abu Bakr, did Abu Bakr, Osman, and Uthman usurp the expectation of Muhammad that Ali would be a successor? Abu Bakr and Umar, but Uthman, he wasn't, he wasn't involved in the in the usurping, but he was, but he basically used to come to come to it. Right. If you go along with someone's sin, do you say some culpability? Right. So let's go back to Abu Bakr, Uthman, and Osman. Did they usurp the will of Muhammad? Right. So that's really fundamental. Yeah. My point is that right at the, 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 the birth of Islam, we've got, uh, we've got clear evidence of corruption about what Islam should be. And it happened right at the start. Remember the... At the start of the death, at the death of the problem, not, not the start, because the 23 years, there was no issue. Okay. I mean, there were hypocrites yeah. who would try to... I mean, when, middle, I, but, but when I say start, I was being a bit more generic, you know, it's kind of like within the first generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But fair enough, you know, right at the very, very start with Muhammad, okay, fine. But when, when, but at the very start of Muhammad, we see evidence of corruption of the religion. And I would, one of the reasons why I reject Islam is because when you look at the hadiths and the hadith science and the many, many developments that occurred after Muhammad's death, including who's going to succeed him and the justifications no, no, the, uh, for that. The hadith science was a, was a, was a thing that was at the time of the Prophet. Uh, have you got any evidence for yeah, that? Uh, there's a hadith in, uh, in the Shia hadith corpus, an authentic hadith, where Ali ibn Ibrahim narrates from his father, whose name is Ibrahim ibn Hadith. Yeah. He narrates from his um, uh, scholar, that yeah. his name is um, Al-Nawfali, yeah. and Al-Nawfali narrates from a Sakuni, 
the Seguin narrates from Jaffa or Sadiq, who is yeah. the grandchild of the Prophet. Yeah. He narrates from his father, who is yeah. Muhammad al-Batam. He narrates from his father, who is Ali Zayn Abdi. Yeah. He narrates from his father, yeah. who is um, Ali uh, uh, Hussain, who is the yeah. direct grandchild of Just father. taking your word for all yeah. of these yeah. names. Yeah. And, then, and then he narrates from his father, yeah. Ali ibn Abi Talib, yeah. who was raised by the Prophet. Yeah. He says, yeah. Which means that if you were to narrate a narration, it includes its chain. Yeah. So, so this notion of having chain narration is directly from the time of the Prophet. Right. Is that, a, is that a hadith used by Sunnis? No. no. So it's a disputed hadith yeah, amongst within, Muslims. Within, within the Shia world, it's, 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 it's authentic. That's fine. Yeah. But it's disputed amongst Muslims yeah, generally. Yeah. I mean, a Sunni wouldn't, wouldn't take that hadith. Right. And, 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 and this is the problem. Like, if you look at Christianity, we Christians have total agreement about the 27 books of the New Testament. Every Christian, uh, right, uh, that's the point, Muslims repeat that catchphrase without understanding what they're talking about. Those books that are disputed amongst Protestants and Catholics are all Old Testament books. The 27 books of the New Testament are unanimous amongst all Christians, we all use them. Right? And the message that they teach is unanimous. Right? So we Christians have greater unity about our belief in the New Testament than Muslims do about their belief in the Hadith. Um, well, That's I mean, just a fact. The, the Quran is our main like source. Yeah. Every Muslim will say, every Muslim will tell you that. And even within like a Salafi understanding, they have very like they have a lot of pride within like Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. Yeah. They 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 pride themselves a lot in those hadith. Yeah. Hadith. So so even even within a Salafi uh, frame of mind, but so the Quran is, is in a different league. Yeah. So. The Bible is really comparable to the Quran, but the Quran is something which every Muslim has, has agreed on. There's no dispute. Actually. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not happy. I'm, I'm happy to argue. I'm happy to accept that all Muslims believe in the Quran, and I'm happy to accept that there is a text of the Quran that all Muslim. That, mm, let's be clear about what I'm trying to say. That there, yes, that there is a text of the Quran that all Muslims agree upon. So long as you're willing to accept that there are textual variants. Um, textual variants, no. That is, those textual variants are also from the time of the Prophet. So, for example, that Malik is the and Malik, claim. Malik and Malik, so the, the king or the, the owner. Did, the did, Pope, did, so. um, did Muhammad ever see the Quran of Duri? Yeah, I mean, he was the one who told it. No, he didn't. The the Dori the Dori text of the Quran came after Muhammad's death. I know the chain because Dori came after Muhammad's death. I mean, Asim came after Muhammad as well. There you go. So he didn't see Asim's text. What about Hafs? Did he see Hafs' text? Hafs takes his reading. So 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 the chain of Hafs and Asim is read by ninety five percent of Muslims. Yes, I know. So Hafs. He takes from Hassan. Yep. Hassan takes from Abdurrahman al Yeah, you don't need to give me the names. I know yeah. you can recite the names. That's I, fine. I mean, I mean I'm, as a Muslim, I'm very proud of this because no other, no other like religion can do this. But no other I mean, certainly Christianity didn't need that. Because that's I'm, something that only Muslims need. And the reason, the reason why, the reason why Muslims need that is because what was the Quran is something that was doubted amongst the first Muslims. I'll give you an example. The, the verse about stoning adulterers in Sahih al-Bukhari. I know you reject that hadith. Am I right in your understanding you reject that hadith? So the verse about stoning the adulterer is in the hadith. And they said that they understood it as being part of the Quran. And it's not in our Quran today. So that's in the time, that's in the time of Uthman. That's in the time of Uthman. Talking, talking. I would use a, a, a better example if you want to. I mean, I, now I'm going to give you ammunition because this example is really. Um, because we have, in Islam, we have a principle called the Nasir al Mansur, which means the abrogated uh, verse. Sometimes, sometimes the ruling of a verse is abrogated, and sometimes the, the, the reading of the verse is abrogated. Yes. So, so the, the verse you're talking about is a Sheikh or Sheikha. Yeah. Which means that if the old uh, or the um, or the you know old male and the old female yeah. are to commit adultery, stone them both. Yeah. For they have committed a grave sin or whatever. Yeah. This verse, its recitation was abrogated, but its ruling remained. Yeah. And and that's a problem. So what's the point? I mean, it's a, just another problem. What is the point in abrogating something that you're going to maintain? Why not just maintain the words that justify it? Well, I mean. We, we have a Isn't that just all, an authoring confusion? By the way, that that explanation that I gave is the is the Sunni narrative. I know. Yeah. It's just an author of confusion. I mean, it's. 
that's, that's basically how, how they explain it. In my personal view, there was never, I mean, that, that verse never existed. So, I know, I know. Yeah. And that goes back to the other problem about the fact that Muslims can't agree what is hadith to trust and what isn't hadith to trust. So I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I hope you can see why I don't find dawah convincing. I don't find the call to accept Islam very convincing. And I think there's very good reasons why you should reject Islam. And, and become a Christian. Now, I want to ask you, what's your name, bro? Mustafa. Mustafa. You've been a very pleasant man. I don't get many opportunities to talk to Shia, so I always enjoy it when I do. And, and you seem, Shia seem to come at these conversations with a different kind of energy than these Salafi nutcases. I mean, you know. He's from Kuwait, he's a Salafi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so my, point, my point to you is, like, do, you, do you have a Bible, bro? Yeah, I've got, I've got the New International Version, I've got King James Version. Great. I want to encourage you to read them and like come back with your questions. And you know, next time, because today we, we, we talked about Islam a lot and the problems I have with Islam. So come back another time and let's make it fair and you talk about what you think are the problems inside Christianity. Is that fair? It's a fair invitation. And I, I'd encourage you to read it and to consider, you know, what you've heard today. Because I think what, what you've heard today are good reasons to essentially reject, um, you know, what essentially reject Islam, to be fair. Um, I'd like to give you a book. And this is just a, a small gift to show that I appreciate the way that we've had this dialogue. Bear with me one second. There you go. So it's just explaining our faith aimed at Muslims. Dealing with some of the questions that Muslims often raise. Yeah. Anyway. Mustafa, lovely to speak to you. Thank you for being such a wonderfully kind person. I really enjoyed it and I hope we'll talk again. God bless you. Take care. Right. So, guys. Not quite the day I was expecting. Um, a brother jumped into an argument and he wanted to talk about the fact that we Christians believe in three gods. When I challenged him to show it, he didn't have any evidence. So he asked me to show him where Jesus calls himself God. Yeah. And he came out with all the necessary catchphrases that a Muslim in the park has to do when they're doing dawah. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Oh, that's illogical. Even though he wasn't even listening either to his own arguments or to mine, because he literally at one point asked me to prove something that I didn't say. And then the argument got back got onto Islam. And I hope I pointed out some of the inconsistencies in the way that Muslims in the park argue. And we looked at some of the self-contradictory statements of the Quran. And then the uncle ducked out of the discussion and Mustafa stayed. And Mustafa uh, has, you know, made certain claims that he's got texts that sort of sideskip the criticisms that I lay at Sunni's door. And to be charitable, I'm just going to accept what he's saying, though obviously he didn't verify that to me. But what it highlighted, I think very successfully, is that Muslims have huge disagreement about what hadiths they believe in whilst telling us constantly this refrain, oh, you've got different Bibles. Well, the fact is you've got different hadiths. So if different Bibles disproves Christianity, different hadiths disproves Islam. And the reality is that Christians have universal agreement about the 27 books of the New Testament. That's completely universal and accepted by all Christians. You don't have that level of unity about your hadiths. There's more disagreement in your hadith literature and about which hadiths to believe in than we Christians have about our Bible versions. And the reality is even reformed Christians who reject the, uh, the for instance, the books in the Roman Catholic Bible yeah. are still encouraged by reformers to read them. Yeah. So even though they don't accept them as scripture, they still are encouraged to read them as books that are good to read, whereas you don't have that same consensus or unity in the differences between your hadiths. In short, you guys have got bigger problems than us, so let's cut the crap about you've got different Bibles. Well done, Bob. See you later.